Here we are at our seventh and final session on Anthem, an acronym, A, avoid, N, say no, T, turn, H, hold, E, enjoy, M, move, all of them strategies for fighting lust. And today we focus on move. What do I mean by move? I mean the opposite of sedentary, static, empty-minded, do-nothing, coasting in life. Lust grows fast in the garden of leisure. The old saying is, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So the idea is, get up and be doing, be doing, abound in work. Get up and do something, sweep a room or hammer a nail or write a letter or fix a leaky faucet and do it all for Jesus' sake. Because an active body and an active mind, especially engaged with other people, will be far less vulnerable to the power of lust. Oh, how I can remember as a teenager, if my parents left home and I had no tasks to do, no homework to do, nothing to do, and was alone in my house, oh, what havoc my mind could wreak on me. So, I think this is a a matter of remarkable experiential wisdom, but also biblical. Let's look at some biblical passages. Romans 12. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. So the opposite of fervent service is sloth. That's laziness. A lazy mind and a lazy body are going to be sitting ducks for the enemy of lust. Put it positively, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore, mainly the fact that you're going to be raised from the dead, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of of the Lord. Now that's an amazing statement. I've I've thought a long time about what it means to abound in work. Abound in work. I think it means do lots of it. Think of your life as a way of packing in wonderful productivity for Christ. Not to earn your salvation, but because you're so thrilled to be alive, thrilled to have hands or legs or eyes or mouth or mind or emotions that you can do something with. So abound in the work of the Lord, because I'll tell you, when my heart and mind and hands are abounding in the work of the Lord, I am not as vulnerable to lust as when I am in lazy postures of idleness. Titus 2.14, Christ gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself. Now, he, he gave himself. He died. He died. Think of this. He died to, why? To purify for himself a people who, of his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Jesus died to make you passionate. That's what zealous means. That's the old-fashioned word for passion. Passionate. Passionate for what? Good works. Getting up in the morning and dreaming, what good can I do for some needy person today? What can I display of the beauties of Christ today and keep my mind full and active and moving, not static and stationary? No, of course, can't leave out this whole proverb. Proverbs 6, 69, go to the ant, oh sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Well, what? what makes you wise if you look at an ant? Well, he tells us. 
Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer. She is a hard worker, gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you lie there, O lazy bones? When will you arise from your sleep? Because as you lie there on your bed, half asleep, The devil is going to sow things in your mind lustfully that wouldn't be there if you got up and copied the ant and got wise. Don't be a fool. Or here's here's another one. I passed by the field of a sluggard, lazy person, an inactive person, a person who's not moving. By the vineyard... Let's just say, see if you agree with this application, the mind. Yeah, it works for money and vineyards. It also works for mind and pornography. I passed by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard, the mind of a man lacking sense. And behold, it, the mind and the vineyard were grown over with thorns and the ground was covered with nettles and its stone wall was broken down. So this mind or this vineyard doesn't have any protection anymore. Why not? He's just lazy. That's why. There's no protection and, and only useless things are growing. Things that give trouble. Sensual thoughts are growing in the mind. Then I saw and considered. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands and pornography. Poverty, yes, of course, that's the main meaning. Poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Helplessness before the porn of the Internet will come through this broken down wall and take over the vineyard of your mind if you are a sluggard. One last text. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ for good works. You you were made, you were created for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What a high calling. You were not made to be lazy. You were created... His workmanship created for a destiny. Activity, productivity, creativity. You really are made to be a maker. You are his poem in order to make your own poems, whether it be a meal or a straight angle with a couple of two-by-fours. You were made to work and create and make something beautiful. Let me sum up. So we have been talking about strategies for fighting lust. The first one in A-N-T-H-E-M was avoid. That is, seek not to even come into the moment of overpowering temptation. These last two are the primary strategy for that. We avoid, not primarily by dodging, but primarily by seeking to maximize our enjoyment of God in Christ and all the glories of His Word. And we express that joy through the movement of our lives in love and in good deeds and a very happy Restful, busy person. Yes, restful, busy person. The only kind of busyness that anybody wants is restful busyness. And the restfulness comes from enjoying God as our sustainer and our goal. So we make this a life vocation. And these three are the immediate 
tactical activity when something has broken through this joy, through this movement, and we have failed to avoid, and here it comes, and this happens to the best of enjoyers and the best of movers, and when it comes, the lustful thought enters your mind, the lustful picture, the lustful idea, the lustful situation, you've got five seconds to say, no, in the name of Jesus, be gone, be gone thought, be gone idea, be gone fantasy, be gone Satan, out of my life, that is not who I am, and then, not staying at the level of negation, you turn to the level of affirmation, you turn to something beautiful, And I suggested right at the heart of what you turn to is the cross. Jesus, bloody, dying, heaving with sighs, looking you in the eye and saying, I died to make you pure. I died to make you pure. And you hold that picture there. How long? Five minutes? Five hours if you have to. You take hold of that garage door that's about to crush your baby. And you say, I will not let you go. I will let my fingers be cut off before I will let this garage door go. And I will not let my mind be taken over by a lustful thought. But the the overwhelming sense is all of our lives are devoted not to doing this. This is a temporary strategy, but to maximizing our capacities for joy in Jesus and putting all that joy into active pursuit of good deeds for His glory. When that happens, this lust here is going to lose its power. May God make you triumphant.